Hey guys, Mendy here, back on my YouTube channel. It's been a while. I have some videos I owe you guys. I'm gonna be doing it. This one's gonna be a really quick five minute video. Um, this is gonna be my shortest video yet, hopefully. Hopefully it's five minutes, we'll find out. Um, Connor Fagan and Morgan Espinelli from Halo PSA are doing a video on new features for the latest stable version of Halo. And specifically, one of those features crosses over with a functionality that I built out into Halo using some of the new features in beta. And so Connor has been harassing me about getting this video out so he can include it in this link. Morgan was nice enough to call me out on the video um, by name, mentioning Rising Tide, which I really appreciate. And so I figured I can spend the five minutes or maybe more showcasing what this feature is and how it works. I'm specifically talking about the side pane dashboard within Halo. But first, let's do the intro. All right, and we're back. Cool, nice intro, very fancy, really appreciate <laughs> the person that made it for me. Moving on, we're inside Halo, we're inside the training instance. This is the instance that I use for the training series, so I'm not gonna be making any changes to it. This is completely read-only. Any changes that I make inside this tenant has to be within the training series, specifically so that we make sure we don't get too far off the rails when we actually do our implementation. And I will be coming back to those implementation videos. I should be having another one coming out this week, hopefully. If not this week, this weekend, or next weekend, maybe, whatever it's called, this coming Sunday. Um, and in the meantime, let's just dive right in. So on the very top over here, we've got this new button that exists. If you are an existing Halo customer with an existing Halo setup that I have not had this put in place yet, you will not have this button. You will need to turn it on. What this button does is that it displays a side dashboard. It pops out just like that. And this dashboard is completely configurable to display whatever you want. The thing that I made inside of it is basically, let me just move myself, there we go. What I made is basically a pinned list of tickets that are essentially tickets that I'm following. And it's literally literally labeled my follow tickets. So if I click in here and I open this ticket up, it takes me right to that ticket. I can just come up here and unfollow this ticket. And then that will disappear from my dashboard. Can't log into Outlook, it's over here. If I go here, pop it out, that ticket is now gone. Very simple. So. How exactly does this work? What is the point of this? How did you make that functionality? How do I even get that dashboard to show up? Let's work backwards. First, this is just a report. It's very simple. I have been pulling the list of tickets that I'm following. So if I go into reporting and I just search for follow, for example, there's a tickets I'm following report. There's another report called follow tickets. This is a bit different and you can even use this to actually create uh, the initial template for what it is you wanna build. I'm doing tickets I'm following, and then I'm displaying it using raw HTML, custom HTML inside the report, customized appearance to display it in the Kanban style view. So if I go to my data source, you can see this is my SQL that I'm using. If I flip my appearance, customize appearance off, and I load the report, you can see this is the table that shows up. It's pretty basic. Um, and then if you go to uh, turn that back on, well, it's got, it's lost. Let me refresh. And you can see this is what it looks like with it on. So the way the custom appearance works is that this box up here is building the HTML document. It's the wrapper. And then it references the inner rows, the inner data table using this dollar report rows. This is very similar to how the PDF templates work. PDF templates, you've got your big page, you've got your details table, dollar variable that pulls the details into the quotation or the invoice PDF template. It's very, very similar to how it works. In this case, we're pulling the report rows into individual in, into the page individually. And that report rows is made up of this HTML over here. And so normally what you would do is you would build out a table and you'd make it look like an actual data table and so on. What I did is I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, wait a second, if I can reference dollar variables here, which I can, it tells you you can use dollar variables uh, indicating dollar variables that are made up of the column name from the row that's returned, then number one, there's HTML inside of the table for the most part. Why can't I just display that? Hint, turns out you can. Number two is that the data is dynamic based off which ticket it is and what work has been done on that ticket and the color of the status and so on and so forth. So why can't I use that to style my output into something that looks semi-decent and part of the platform? And hint, you can, because that is what I did. 
So if you uh, look at this HTML, specifically, you can see that I'm styling a bunch of divs and cards. I'm using dynamic CSS selectors to be able to trigger different parts of the screen to show up and, just, and or go away based off of a value being true or false. And uh, so like right here, there's a read tag being true or false. Um, and you can see that that's just being referenced based off dollar red, which is one of the, the variables that's one of the values being returned in this table is literally F red is being read as red, right? Like that. So I'm building this report so that it looks like this. And then after that, it's literally just a matter of sticking it into a dashboard and then sticking that dashboard and throwing it into the side pane view. That's it. That's the five minutes. Very simple, very basic, very easy to use. The only warning I would call out is potentially if you're following tickets, you can get CC'd twice or double CC'd or attached uh, onto an email, onto tickets accidentally so that you get emailed twice or whatever. You may want to mess with your notification settings and make sure that it works for you so that it doesn't get in your way or it doesn't get annoying. Other than that, you can build whatever dashboard you want and throw it in there. So let's go take a look at that dashboard. If I flip over to configuration and I search for dashboards, we will see that there's a brand new dashboard that exists in your trial called side uh, pane. Uh, where the heck? Oh, I renamed it. Mendy's tickets. <laughs> I renamed it for fun. Uh, speaking of read only, not making any changes. Let's put this back. This should be called side pane, essentially. And so you'd see a dashboard called side pane. And inside of there, you'd go to the layout and you would see the widgets with your tickets over here. The key to remember is that the side pane is pretty small. And so you're only going to get a certain amount of, of view, a certain size width of things in here. But you can see that we kind of basically fit it in pretty well. But you can also always just change it if you want to and decide what report you want to pull in and or add additional reports, change the default appearance, and so on and so forth. So we can say we want no border with hover, save that, save that. And I'm really good at not following directions. Um, and so now if I refresh this and reopen this back up again, we should get a hover over the widget area with no border. Right? You can see that how, how it hovers. Or we don't, if we don't like that, we can just edit this again. Set this back to no border. Save. Save. And then just reload this dashboard. And now it doesn't hover, but we still have our tickets here. Okay? So I'm using custom HTML on a report to design an output in a style of a Kanban card. I'm taking that style. I'm throwing it into a dashboard. I'm taking that dashboard and I'm embedding it into the side of the pl platform. And one of the best things about this is that no matter where you are in the platform, you can easily just pull up a list of tickets and jump right to it, just like notifications, except they stay around for longer than three days. Some of the other big things that came with uh, this feature was the ability to add dashboards almost everywhere. Like uh, custom tabs can be dashboards as well, and they can reference ticket IDs using the dollar fault ID variable, which means you can literally design your own interface for your tickets, um, which is very powerful and very cool. I hope this was interesting. I hope that this was uh, give you some ideas on things that you can do and makes you excited about some of the new features that are coming or that you already have in Halo. If you need any help setting it up, let me know, drop me a comment, send me an email, and I can shoot you over the SQL, the HTML, and so on and so forth. If uh, if you want to do it yourself, you should be able to just pull up a uh, trial, spin up a trial, and grab it from there. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.